That was me using VR to titrate levofed on a sepsis patient. So in this course, we're going to go over titrating drips. We're going to create a new series for you guys because one thing that I did not have coming out of nursing school is understanding how to actually titrate drips, especially when they're running together. So we're going to first start with vasopressors and with one of the most common vasopressors that will hang is called norepinephrine or levofed. We're first going to describe norepinephrine. We're going to go over the mechanism of action. Then we're going to go into the adverse effects and complications and contraindications as well when you hang a drip like this. So what is norepinephrine's mechanism of action? To put it simply, our bodies have adrenergic receptors. And our adrenergic receptors are responsible to balance our sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. Our sympathetic raises our blood pressure, our heart rate, our parasympathetic is calming and it lowers our blood pressure and our heart. And our bodies have something called alpha and beta adrenergic receptors. And what norepinephrine mainly impacts is the alpha-1 adrenergic receptor, which causes direct systemic vasoconstriction, so it increases the blood pressure. Now, while norepinephrine still impacts the beta-1 adrenergic receptors, which is more likely to increase the heart rate and the contractility of the heart, it still does not have a profound impact like it does on the alpha-1 receptors where it's causing vasoconstriction on the peripheral vascular system. So you may ask, why would we start a norepinephrine drip? Well, this is typically indicated if we have a severe hypotension that is not responsive to fluid. Typically, when we have a patient who has severe hypotension, our first intervention is to give fluid resuscitation to increase that vascular volume, which theoretically increases the blood pressure. But if that does not work, we then go into a vasopressor, which norepinephrine is typically the first line vasopressor that we put on patients. But this, of course, depends on the patient's specific pathophysiology, but this is typically the general first line vasopressor. So if you think about it, it's indicated for patients who are not responding to fluid resuscitation, so that blood pressure is not staying up. So what we do next is constrict those vessels, because if we allow hypotension to happen, that blood that the heart is trying to circulate is not going very far because we do not have a constricted vessel to carry that blood to our organs. So we need something that compresses those veins, that vascular system, and that allows the blood to actually propel to the organs properly. So your most common indications is acute hypotension and septic shock. Now in this VR simulation that we're playing right next to us, this is a sepsis case scenario. So what we would typically do with a sepsis patient, for example, is we would try fluid resuscitation first, and if it were non-responsive, we would then go to a vasopressor. This is common with septic patients because they have something called third spacing that occurs. So when a sepsis patient, they dilate, it's severe hypotension in that vascular system, and that increases the permeability of fluids. So then that fluid, what that means, leaves the vascular space and goes into the tissues that are not responsible for carrying fluid to, or blood, to our other organs. So we need something to constrict those vessels to ensure blood is still circulating to our organs. That is a common pathway that sepsis causes. So we typically need a vasopressor if our fluid resuscitation does not work. And that exactly explains why fluid resuscitation, for example, doesn't work in sepsis, because you'll pump more fluids in, but it doesn't stay in that vascular space anyways, because it's more permeable. It leaves that vascular space and does not allow circulation to occur. So as you can see in this video, we're hanging levofed, and we're gonna get into how you actually titrate levofed, just to go over the general practices. And of course, once again, make sure you're following your hospital policy protocol. Now, before we get into the specifics on how to titrate it, let's first go into the contraindications and the adverse effects. So one contraindication is, is we don't wanna start with a vasopressor without trying fluid resuscitation for most patients, because we wanna test out if it's hypovolemia, the low volume in the vascular space, that's actually causing the hypotension in the first place. Because if we don't actually test that first, or we don't know about it first, and we just put them straight on a vasopressor, you're not fixing the underlying issue. Another contraindication may be somebody with a mesenteric or peripheral thrombus formation. If we cause vasoconstriction, it could potentially cause decreased circulation below that limb, or in this case with a mesenteric artery, is in the abdomen causing gangrene of the bowel. So there are certain things that we want to look out for if we have a known diagnosis. It's not so good if you constrict the veins even further and decrease the circulation on a clot that's already in that circulation. And this is not necessarily a contraindication, but this perfectly goes into the adverse effects, is we typically want to give these patients a central line of some sort because it can cause peripheral tissue injury if it leaks outside of the vein. A normal peripheral IV is typically contraindicated in most hospital systems 
but that's something, of course, once again, you must confirm with your hospital. This is just a general course. So let's quickly go over the adverse effects. We got, of course, hypertension. We don't want to give this to a patient who already has hypertension because it can cause severe hypertension. So we talked about earlier, if there is clots, it's maybe contraindicated. That's because one of the adverse effects could be peripheral ischemia. So it could block circulation to the limb if there's something already underlying going on. So we always want to watch carefully for arrhythmias when we give these types of medications because it can increase heart rate and contractility by stimulating that beta-1 adrenergic receptor. All right, guys. So the last thing is learning how to actually titrate norepinephrine and seeing the actual clinical response in real time. When you use an application like Corsetta VR, you can practice titrating in live time and seeing your reactions that would happen in real life. So if I made a mistake in the simulation by titrating and I didn't follow the order correctly, you're gonna see the adverse effect on the patient. So in this case, we're gonna do it correctly, of course. So the typical order for a norepinephrine drip is titrating one to five mics per minute is the dose metric used for norepinephrine. It's mics per minute on the IV pump. You would program it in the pump. So we would titrate one to five mics per minute, and it's typically every five minutes to reach a map above 65 or a systolic blood pressure above 90. Now, if you're watching this and possibly you're going right into critical care, this is something you want to pay attention to and really learn hemodynamics and how every one of these drips, especially norepinephrine, is going to impact your patient's vital sign. And of course, as a nurse, you always wanna make sure you're following your titration protocols carefully because you do not wanna go outside those parameters because if you do, you can potentially cause an adverse effect on your patient, especially with a norepinephrine drip these drips are severely sensitive. And lastly, it's important to know the max dose. Now, of course, this can depend on hospital policy, but typically in general, it's 40 mics per minute. And that's usually the spot where you wanna say, if it's still not impacting your patient's blood pressure, that would be the next step to possibly call your physician and see if there's another recommendation for adding on another vasopressor. We're gonna get into all kinds of vasopressors, so if you like this video, make sure you guys give us a follow, and we're going to go over one by one in this series. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video.